Okay. Bill, this video is for you, buddy. I promised you I'd make a video showing you how we make homemade Italian gravy, or a lot of people call it sauce. Depends where you come from. If you're from Philadelphia or New Jersey, pretty much call it gravy if you're Italian. If you're not Italian, you'll call it sauce. Uh, across the United States, pretty much everyone calls it sauce, but uh, we call it gravy. Uh, I'll get into that later. It's just like the same argument as, uh, where's this shit at? I'm not in a very good mood right now. I had to take my dad to the friggin' foot doctor. And he's old, you know what I mean? He's got yellow toenails, and he was telling me how the guy came out with a grinder. Just what I want to hear right before I'm making a dinner. Okay. Is it sauce or is it gravy? Well, people call it sauce. Peeps, and uh, probably more people call it sauce than call it gravy. But here's the same argument for me. Okay. This chocolate ice cream topping right some people call it sauce chocolate sauce and some people call it syrup it says syrup I always called it syrup but I've heard a lot of people call it chocolate sauce it's the same fucking argument with spaghetti sauces you know my mother always said <clears throat> I don't know it doesn't really mean this but she used to say it. if you call it sauce you don't know what you're doing it's just a pride thing we call it gravy because uh, a lot of times, uh, if you make a lot of meat with it, the meat juices get into the gravy, and that's called a meat gravy, or some people call it meat sauce, but it actually turns the sauce into more like a gravy. It's not like pizza sauce, it's different. Gravy on pasta, or sauce on pasta, is completely different than the kind of sauce you put on a pizza. There's a difference. And if you know, if you don't know that, then there, now you know it, there's a difference. Uh, Bill, I'm doing this video because I might put it on my channel if it comes out good. If it doesn't, this will be a recipe for you and it will be a lot of fun. Okay. First thing you want to do is when you're making homemade Italian sauce, I'll say sauce because that's what everyone thinks it is, um, you got to get your shit together here. And today, uh, well, I got two cans of crushed tomatoes. It doesn't ma matter what brand you get. I like to get uh, just a knockoff brand because I don't like any seasoning in it. I want it raw. Like if you get cento, they'll put oregano in it or parsley. You don't want it that way. You want it bare. So I got Price Right. Okay, Price Right is like a fucking welfare supermarket. But they got you can get like ten cans for ten dollars. So it's just crushed raw tomatoes. Down here is a is a can of Hunts, which I really don't like using that, but that's all we got. So two of these size canned tomatoes, they're 12 ounce cans, okay? This is this will serve like a family, a small family of four or five. Um, and the spices you will need, Bill, would be onion powder, garlic powder, crushed pepper flakes, no oregano. Oregano don't go in pizza, doesn't go in spaghetti sauce. It goes on pizza and hoagies. So don't put oregano. A lot of people make that mistake. And they're like the gravy's good or the sauce is good, but it tastes a little funny. That's your funny taste. Parsley. Fresh parsley is better. If you get it off the leaf, that's the best way to do it. But I don't have any. In Italian they call it Vazana Gol. Now if you got fresh Vazana Gol, man, it really hooks up your uh, spaghetti sauce and of course salt and pepper which this is a big salt and pepper mill two and one okay and one whole onion and probably about four or five cloves of garlic and about a pound of uh, this is going to go into meatballs too a pound of fresh real Romano cheese now you can't excuse the term cheese out when you buy cheese you gotta buy the good shit. Don't buy the cheap shit because it's not gonna work. This shit's like seven dollars, but if you want it to be good, you gotta get this. Uh, it's it's made by Lucatelli. It's one of the best. If you don't have that, you know, just try to do the best you can. But this is this is good Romano cheese, and uh, that that's it. That's all the sauce and it's all the seasonings you will need. 
is that. Uh, this bad boy back here, this is my, I cook a lot, man. I don't do videos, but I cook a lot. And I gotta uh, give Gargwar 1981 a shout out, because this, I guess you could call this a response video to him, because he's the one that uh, said I should do it, but I've been putting it off so long, because I got a gun channel, and I don't know how people are gonna react, but this is just something fun. You know, let's celebrate the subscribers, and uh, uh, the Armory channel came in three categories in the contest, and came in third place for the best gun channel, man. How cool is that? I'm, I'm very excited about that and very proud of it. I'm not bragging, but I think uh, that is awesome. I didn't even think I'd be mentioned, believe it or not. So thank you for voting for the Armory channel. Uh, this is my stand mixer. Now, this is a real good one. It's a commercial one. Uh, like, you got them little stupid ones you get in Walmart, you know, like they're like on the level of like a fucking high point. Well, this KitchenAid, this is like having a SIG, okay? It's got all steel gears, it's powerful, and I use that to mix my meatballs. I don't like mixing it with my hands because I got hairy hands. And I don't want a hair coming off my hand and getting in my fucking meatball, okay? If you want to see a hairy meatball, I'll take my shirt off. Or, yeah, yeah, that's, that about describes it. Or a dirty cotton ball. I look like that too, it depends. Um... So yeah, that, that's the stuff I got. And Bill, if, if you don't have a strong stand mixer like this, mix it with your hands, that's all. If you don't, you know, you're, I'm sure you got big hairy hands, Bill, that's what I heard. And if you do, just wear uh, cooking gloves. Or have your wife mix it. But it's a bitch, you gotta, it takes a long time. Alright, let's get rolling here, I'll get everything ready. Alright, Billy baby. Okay. There's three cloves of garlic about this size, okay? I'm going to get ready to start mincing them up. You want to mince them up real fine. And there's one big old whole onion. And don't worry about it. Put a big whole onion in there because it cooks down. It cooks down to nothing, okay? And what's, what else you're going to need is you're going to leave some olive oil. I buy Cento. It's pretty good. Uh, it, it, it's extra virgin olive oil. It doesn't matter what kind you get. And I'll show you what you do with that in a minute. And uh, I'm going to get this chopped up and then let you see what it looks like, give you an idea, and then uh, we'll be right back. Okay, that's about what it should look like, right around there. And the next thing I'm going to do is, I forgot to take the cap off, hold on. Put a little olive oil in the bottom of the pot. Here's my pot. I'll show you how much. Just a little bit, you don't need a lot. You don't want a bunch of grease floating on top of your sauce, okay? Even that's a lot. Just enough to coat it. Then you put your uh, flame on as low as, pretty, as low as you could pro possibly get it. And uh, let's say right about something like that. Not too low. I'll tell you when to turn it down low. Right now, you want to brown the uh, you want to brown the garlic and you want to brown the onions and you want to throw a little butter in there. So let me get the butter. Now I can't help if this video is long. What the fuck you want me to do? Uh, I've got some butter and I'll throw about um, on top of that olive oil about a. Uh, let me see. Yeah, about a quarter stick of butter. Alright? And I'll show you what it looks like when it starts, uh, you know, I'll show you the right color it needs to be and all that stuff. And all the seasoning. Alright, hold on. Okay, there's all the onions, the garlic, and the butter. Now, it looks like a lot, I know. It looks like a ton of onions, but that's, don't worry, they cook down and they go, they pretty much liquefy. And no, I, I don't take them back out. I leave them in there. I see people that do that. Other guys sometimes they'll take them back out, just leave the uh, flavor in the oil. I don't like it. It's it's not enough flavor. You gotta leave it in there. That's me. So while that's happening there, and I guess you know I need two hands to do this. I have my tripod. I will season this. I will season this. I'll put um, garlic powder. Okay. And I will put onion powder.
and I am not prepared. I never did this before. Okay, a little onion powder. Okay, and red pepper flakes. Just a little. You don't want to. You're not making fucking hot chili here. Just a little. Just want to give it a little bite. And a black pepper. But I gotta put the camera down because I have a pepper mill. Uh, yeah, and then uh, you just let that cook till it turns a golden, not brown, just golden. You don't want it to be brown, that'll taste like crap. Uh, I'll show you. Yo. Alright, see how it's looking. How you like that stove, Guard War? My father in law got it for me, dude. $1,500 stove. Because he knows we're serious about our friggin' food. <laughs> All right, Bill. See how that looks? See how it's a like golden, golden brown. That's almost ready. Just a shade darker. Then I'm gonna put in these two cans of sauce here, just two, and I'll add just a maybe a third can of water. Okay. I'll show you all that shit. But that's what it's supposed to look like. It's just about ready. My fucking camera smells like garlic and onions now, man. It smells like some hooker I used to know. Her name was Blanche. That was a, uh, not a good time in my life. Just kidding. All right, sweet Billy. Let's check it out now. Looking pretty good. You want the little brown edges on the onion? That looks good. What you're doing is you're caramelizing the onion. And the more you caramelize it, the sweeter it gets. And the onions get nice and sweet. It gives you a lot of flavor. And that is ready. So I'm just going to get this. Got the can of that in. There's my gravy spoon holder now. Sauce, sorry. Everyone gets mad. It's sauce, dude. Fuck you. It's gravy where I come from. Okay, another can. And now I'll put a little water in the can. See this? Assholes. Someone was supposed to do dishes and he didn't do them. So we're gonna have a little talk with that boy when he gets home. Okay, just a little water like that. Just a little. You don't want too much because you don't want you don't want the sauce to be real runny. That's all. You don't want it to be runny. You want it to be nice and thick, like a and, and creamy, you know what I mean? So I'll just, this is nowhere near ready yet. This is just the beginning. Now, now is the time, after you put the sauce in, now is the time you put your gas pilot on as low as you could go. Just where you could barely see it, you know what I mean? Real low. Because this is going to cook for about two and a half hours. And the time is 12 o'clock figure. So this will cook for a long time. And now what you got to do is you have to re-season everything. You got to put salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, uh, a little bit of red pepper flakes, and the parsley, and um, what else? Oh, of course, Romano cheese. A lot of Romano cheese. Okay. And uh, I guess we could, uh, let, me, let me get set up and I'll show you what, how, how to do get that done. Alright, I'm going to add the um, Romano cheese, parsley, I already put pepper in there, Romano cheese, parsley, salt, and when you get the cheese, use it generous, be generous with it. That, I know, that's a lot man, I mean that is probably a good three quarters of a cup, okay, salt, And a little parsley. Like I said, if you can get fresh parsley, it's better. But the dehydrated kind you get in the can is fine. Now we'll just stir this up real good. And I do not put a lid on it. I leave the lid off because I want the moisture to evaporate out of here. Yeah. Been making this for years, buddy. Now this is my mother's recipe. She used to make it all the time and it was her mother's recipe. So it's 
it's an old Italian family tradition and uh, the only difference is I like my sauce a little thicker so my mom used to use puree which is thinner sauce I like to use crushed I like it a little thicker than puree I don't like puree and that's it now I'll let that cook man on the lowest flame as possible for a good hour and a half to two hours now when it starts to bubble even though the flame is low it will start to bubble you gotta come and check it every 15 minutes and give it a turn don't start tasting it until about an hour goes by because right now it's only going to taste like it's going to taste like fucking V8 juice it ain't even going to taste like gravy or sauce yet because all the acids and all that shit's got to get, get cooked out of there all that bitter taste is going to get cooked out of there that's why you have to leave it cook a long time that's why spaghetti in a jar sucks ass because they can't make it like that I don't care what restaurant you go to I've been to so many restaurants, you can never find a restaurant that can make sauce as good as you can at home because they just do not have the time to do it. They can't sit there and can you imagine their pot to have a pot of sauce on for six hours to have people to feed. So that's why it's hard to find good red gravy in an Italian restaurant. All right, especially if you grew up Italian, you'll know the difference. It's just like I it's just like I think Famous Dave's spare ribs are fantastic, but to a true southerner, they might suck. You know, it's all you know, it's all what experience. So right now, that's it. That's all I got for you right now. Okay, a little little time's gone by. It's looking good. There's another ingredient you gotta put in here. It doesn't matter when you put it in, but you have to put it in because uh, gravy, uh, spaghetti sauce is very acidic and tarty, you know, like a lemon. So this is what you do. If I can fucking do it with one hand, you get two teaspoons of sugar. One. Two. That cuts the acid. I'm going to have to put three because I can't get the thing to fill up my spoon. So really, that's it's two, but three. That shit cuts the acid. And it gives it a little sweetness to it, not too much. You don't want to have sweet sauce. You just want like a little, you want to bring that tarty level down to where it's not like, it tastes soury. Like it's a weird sour aftertaste. So that's it. Now I'm just going to leave that bad boy cook and simmer. It won't even simmer, it'll just bubble. Like bloop, bloop, it'll be just do that. And just keep stirring it every 15 minutes for about an hour and a half to two hours. Then I'll show you, uh, we'll show you, you know what, while that's doing that, let's show you how you do the meatball meat. Alright, friggin' meatballs. Here's what we got. We got Italian sausage, it doesn't matter what form you get it in, these are patties, it doesn't matter. Good Italian sausage, pizza, okay, sweet Italian. You need some of that. Uh, <clears throat> about, I don't know, what's that, two pounds of veal. And this is just some leftover pork I had. You could you could put that in there. And uh, that should be enough meat to do it. The, the key ingredient, the three ingredients is beef, pork, and veal. So I'm using leftover stuff I have in my freezer. So here's pork, all right, veal, and sausage. Uh, I got beef too, so I'll put some beef. This is something I do. Okay, this is my little secret. I'll put one sausage patty in there because sausage has a tremendous amount of flavor in it. And it really hooks the meatballs up. So, the, your typical person, beef, beef, pork, and veal. That's your combo. And I'll throw one sausage patty in there. I'm going to throw it all in there. And, and with garlic, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, real garlic, no onions. You don't put onions in meatballs. It's not a meatloaf. It's a friggin' meatball. Be right back. Alright, we're back. Got my beef, pork, and veal in there. Oops, forgot a sausage patty. See, I'm slipping. I got women on my, well, I guess I got women on my brain or something. Sausage patty. Okay. That's my secret. You don't have to do that. Okay. Okay. Romano cheese again. Remember? Romano cheese. Uh, I'd say I don't measure, man. I just pour shit in there until it tastes good. I don't do that measuring stuff. You know? 
that's about right that's about a half a cup I guess and one egg you need an egg because you don't need an egg but I like to put an egg because it uh it uh firms the meat up a little bit keeps it from falling apart and parsley just about that much parsley is a real uh, mellow seasoning you can't really overdo it salt you need a lot of salt when you're making meatballs just just you know what I do man I mean when I'm making meatballs I'll roll a tiny little one and fry it and taste it and uh, make sure it tastes good before I make them all fresh ground pepper garlic powder okay a little bit of onion powder not too much like I said remember it's not a meatloaf it's a meatball just a little for some because garlic and onion works good together do not put real onions in here you do not do that okay and that's it now what I'll do is I have a bit for the stand mixer it's called a dough hook I'll put the bit on there with the stand mixer put it down it'll stir it and stir it and stir it and I'll keep pulling it down and stir you want it to look like a paste I'll show you uh, Billy it's been a while since I did this I forgot to tell you you need breadcrumbs Italian style breadcrumbs you want and just like just like you put the Parmesan in Italian style breadcrumbs maybe maybe a, just a quarter of a cup that's very important I had to tell you that I just forgot it's just been a while since I did this all right be right back all right homies I got my dough hook I'm gonna put my friggin dough hook on here it's pretty cool like that make sure the bowl is locked in pull that fucker down now if the meat's too stiff and too tight you can always add a little milk it loosens it up it's easier for the mixer to mix lock and uh, now you know what's funny power is needed when you use this thing okay here we go Whoop, not fast very slow just like that I'll keep mixing that shit now remember Bill you can do this with your hands too but like I said I think you got hairy hands I wouldn't recommend it so if you have a stand mixer don't try to use a, uh, a stand mixer if it's not a good one because you'll burn the motor out they're really not designed to stir meat you know what I'm saying I'm sure you know that but just in case you don't uh, if you don't have a good stand mixer like this one you're gonna need to use your hands all right, I'll show you what it's supposed to look like in a minute. I'm trying to keep the video short. All right, I'm going to stop this little mo and fold it down. Get one of these uh, spatulas. Okay. Make sure it's clean because it's a dusty house. I'm not going to wash everything off right now because I've got dogs. And what I'm going to do, I don't know if you can see in there. Yeah, you can see it. I'm just going to get everything folded over and fold it down. This is great, this machine, man. It really takes a lot of labor out of doing meatballs. Meatballs are a bitch. I mean, they'll fuck you up. All right. Okay. I made it just like a little ball again. I'll put this back down. First notch. And, just, and I'll just keep repeating that and repeating it and repeating it. Uh, as far as the sauce goes, the sauce is looking good, smelling good. And uh, we'll be right back again. Man, I'm going to have a lot of videos to drag in that friggin' media thing. Okay, we're getting ready to stop it. Uh, I'm going to give you the final look. See what it's supposed to look like. I'll give it a little uh, little taste test and all. What the fuck? What the fuck was that? Did I just see a SIG run by? Yes, I did. You know why? Because this is a gun channel and you got to get the SIG in there. <clears throat> And what it was running after was this. Oh, this just came in today. My SIG 226 stainless steel 
recoil guide rod. Getting rid of that polymer piece of shit that was in there. I want to put this in there. Now my sig's ready. Anyway, here we go. This is ready. I'm going to stop it. Now, I don't have a problem with this. A lot of people are going to say, Oh, dude, you're a nasty bitch. But I'm just going to tell you, I've been doing this for years and I never got sick of it. I don't have a problem with tasting a piece of raw meat. So you can either do it. No, I ain't telling you to do it. If you get sick, you'll blame me. But I take a little pinch, just like a little pinch, and I taste it. And man, it's it's perfect. I know you must think that's nasty, but it don't. But a lot of people do that. Well, I never got sick from it, and I've been doing it. I'm 42. I've been doing it for 30 years. Okay, I've been cooking this stuff from when I was a teenager all the way to the present. That is on the money. It tastes fantastic. So this is how I want to show you what to do now. I'm going to take the bowl out. I'm going to roll the meatballs up. You want them the size of a golf ball. You don't want to make big, fat, fucking meatballs, okay? It's not a. Uh, it's it's. You want them about the size of a golf ball. It's perfect. And then we're going to broil them. Now you can fry them if you want, but that makes a huge mess. So what I do is I broil them. I broil them till they're brown. Take them out, flip them around, brown, and then toss them all in the pot of sauce and let them cook with the sauce all day. And you have that sausage, pork, and veal flavor constantly swirling around in the sauce. Okay? I'm getting hungry just talking about it. So uh, let's go do that. All right, there they are. They're a little bigger than golf balls, ain't they? Well, it's been a while. They're a little bigger. Uh, they're a little big, but they're cool. They'll be fine. What I did is I put the oven on broil on low. And uh, I got the tray at about, I'll show you. This is important, I guess. On like the third, the third one down. And this fucking tripod, sorry. Hope no good women are on watches. Tray's about the third one down. And what I'll do with that is the meatballs are on a tray. This saves a lot of bullshit. I sprayed the tray with Pam so they don't stick. Put them little put put your balls in the oven. Close the door on your balls. And let your balls cook for about till they look brown on the top. Almost darker than brown. Like like a nice crust. When they look like that, take it out, flip it over. Do the other side, or you don't even have to do the other side, but I do. Once they're brown on the top and they're hard, uh, they're not cooked all the way. They're just, just to give it texture. Then you put them in the pot, dump them all in the pot, be careful, they'll splash, and then stir them slowly, and then let them cook the rest of the rest of the time with the uh, with the gravy there. All right, Bill. I hope this video helped you, buddy. I don't even know if I'm going to upload it on YouTube. I got to watch it first. I look like an asshole. But uh, this video should help you out uh, in making this homemade meatballs and gravy. See ya.